The purpose of this little video is to show you how to compute the greatest common divisor of two integers using Python. We'll start from the beginning. First of all, we're going to write the following symbol. D vertical bar A means there is, okay, everything here is going to be an integer. Q, so D is equal to QA, Q times A. In other words, D is a divisor or factor of A. Okay. Now, if A and B are integers, we def we say D is a common divisor of A and B if D divides both, if D divides A and D divides B. Now one thing I should mention, we're defining this function GCD of A and B is going to be defined for integers. However, GCD of 0 comma 0 will be undefined. And here's the reason why. Every integer divides 0 evenly. Because you just take it and multiply it by the integer 0, the result is 0. So it makes no sense, really, to talk about a greatest common divisor of 0 and 0. Now here's some basic facts about greatest common divisors. Why is this true? Because AND is a commutative operator. The GCD, if, if, you, have a, if you have a common divisor of A and B, if, if something's a divisor of A and B, it is a common divisor of B and A. Okay, so the largest divisor of A and B is the same as the largest divisor of B and A. Not much going on there. Now here's another interesting fact. Of minus A and B is going to be the same as... Which is going to be the same as the GCD of A and minus B which is the same as the greatest common divisor of minus a and minus b. Why is this true? Because minus 1 times minus 1 is equal to 1. 1, minus 1 and 1 are the only integers that have integer multiplicative inverses. So changing the sign of a number does not affect its factors or its visibility. So here's one other useful fact. If I have a number a and 0, the greatest common divisor is just going to be the absolute value of a. For example, the greatest common divisor of 5 and 0 is 5. The greatest common divisor of minus 5 and 0 is also 5. So this thing can just sort of disregard signs. Now one reason this is important is that this will be used to reduce fractions when we create a fraction class. That's why we're, that's why we're bothering with this. Now, one way to compute greatest common divisors is just look for common divisors and just keep dividing them out until you winnow things down. This is what you learned from Mrs. Wormwood. But the problem with this is, computationally, it's not very efficient. However, a very superficial observation in the form of this theorem will make it's possible to compute the greatest co common divisor of two integers in an extremely simple way. So here's the theorem. If A, B, Q, and R are 
all integers. And b is equal to a times q plus r. Then the GCD of a and b is equal to the GCD of, of a and r. Now, a lot of times people will cite a mathematical theorem and they, they, they won't prove it, but we can prove it. And it's, it, it works for a very simple reason. Suppose D <clears throat> divides A and D divides R. Then, then A and R both have a common factor of D. So Q times A and R have a common factor of B. Hence, B equals A times Q plus R has a common factor of D. This says A and R, that this says that every divisor, A and R is a divisor of A and B. Likewise, you can see the other way around coming very quickly. If D divides A and D divides B, R is equal to B minus A times Q. So R must be divisible by D. So every common divisor of A and R is a common divisor of A and B. Every common divisor of A and B is a common divisor of A and R. A and R and A and B have the same common divisors. GCD of A and B must equal the GCD of A and R. We're done. That's the proof. It's all a consequence, a simple consequence of the, of the distributive law. And if you took the definition that I showed above and wrote things out very carefully, you collect up the factors of D and you'd see that everything works. Okay? So now we have that under our belt. This is absolutely key to making our greatest common divisor function work. So now I'm going to back out of here. Time to write some Python. Oh. Let's write this from scratch. First of all, if A is less than zero, just strip the sign off. If B is less than zero, strip the sign off. All right. Now, if you want, you can also do this at the very beginning. If A equals zero and B equals zero, that'll throw a cream pie in the face of somebody that calls the greatest common divisor of zero and zero, and you should throw a cream pie in their face. That'll cause their program to come to a screeching halt. But that's a programmer mistake, and, uh, well, you're doing that programmer a service because you're pointing out the error and he can fix it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do this. Let's see. While B mod A 
is greater than zero, we're going to let B be A and A be B mod A. And you'll notice in Python we have this lovely simultaneous tuple assignment. We're not embarrassed to take advantage of those goodies. We shall. And now, we're not going to return B mod A because that's going to be zero. Because when you exit a while loop, its predicate is false. And the only way this predicate becomes false is if B mod A grinds down to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to return B. All right, let's see what happens. Now I happen to know a very, very nice test for this. If you're a number nerd, you know that's 6 to the 5th power. And if you're a computer nerd, you know that that's 2 to the 20th power. And if you don't, fie and shame upon you. So now let's go ahead and run this. Oops, 160. What the devil happened? B mod A. Oh, I think we should be returning A. Try that again. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, I went, I went one step too far. So we return A, and we have our greatest common divisor. So this is all based, this, this algorithm has a name. It's called the Euclidean algorithm. It's actually quite efficient. The slowest possible case for this is the Fibonacci numbers. If you take two consecutive Fibonacci numbers, it'll take a little while for them to grind down. And all of those are have a com greatest common divisor of one. So that's the slowest possible case. The Fibonacci numbers grow exponentially. And what that tells you is that this algorithm is big O of log of n. So this resolves in logarithmic time. So this is very efficient, and it'll take very big numbers and grind them down to their greatest common divisor in very, very short order. Let's just go ahead and uh, do a cheap parlor trick here. Let's just throw that on. And I'll put an 875 at the end. So I know it's divisible by 125. No, I'll, I'll, I'll do this. And put a 625 on the end. And I know that's divisible by 125. Let's see if we get some multiple of 125 here. Ooh, look at that. So now you know how to compute the greatest common divisor, two numbers. One thing you can do with this is you can do this. Oh, let's say name first. Let's uh, name. Okay. Is equal to. And this is an old Python trick. It's very useful, and I'll explain what it does in just a moment. If you import this code to another program, this code down here will not run. However, if you run it directly at the command line, this program will run. This, incidentally, is a really good way to keep test code for modules that you use. That way, if something goes wrong in an application where you're using the module, you can already see what vulnerabilities you've tested. Okay? So this is the greatest common divisor using Euclid's algorithm done in Python.